we're going to move on now to the second of our keynotes in this uh, in this conference, um, and uh, this is being uh, given by uh, George Palatil, uh, who is senior lecturer and head of social work at the University of Edinburgh. George is from Kerala, India, where he completed a master's degree in social work. He taught at the University of Mumbai and at the Tata Institute of Social Science before moving to Scotland in 1999 to research uh, family careers of people living with HIV. He's also worked as a statutory social worker specialised in, in social work with, with older people. And today, uh, George is going to be get, giving an overview of social work in, in the Commonwealth, and we're delighted to have him with us. So, so George, uh, over to you. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. Good morning and good afternoon to you all, wherever you are. And thank you all for joining this amazing conference to reflect on the history of social work in the Commonwealth. We had a fascinating range of speakers yesterday who reflected on a variety of topics that explored social work's historical roots and the influence of Western knowledge in shaping social work in the Commonwealth. It's my privilege today to reflect on the place of global social work and bring together some of the themes that inform social work in the Commonwealth and connect us together in this shared endeavor. My name is Dr. George Palatti. I'm a senior lecturer and head of social work at the University of Edinburgh. As mentioned in the introduction, I trained in India and my first job as a social work academic was at the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. While I live and work in Scotland, I see myself as part of the, that shared humanity, something that I believe underscores the very philosophy of global social work. When we say global social work and the Commonwealth, what does it mean? In trying to reflect on how social work evolved in the Commonwealth, I was reminded of the Victorian poor law of the 19th century Britain that ensured that the poor were housed in workhouses, clothed and fed, which in, in turn required them to work for long hours. Did such expressions of humanitarianism underscore human rights, the very core of social work? I was also reflecting on how social work originated in other parts of the Commonwealth. In India, for example, social work took its roots in altruism, an extension of religious and philanthropic spirit committed to support the poor and marginalized. One of the speakers yesterday reflected on the Gandhian philosophy of nonviolence and passive resistance, and how these ideas have shaped social work's commitment to ensuring the welfare of the masses. Though much of the social work learning in India is rooted in the Western theoretical notions. Across the Commonwealth and indeed the world, social work is concerned with the impact of poverty and inequality and with promoting human rights and social justice and collective ways to advance human development. With a commitment to promoting social change, em empowerment of poor, empowerment of the people and respect for diversity, social work engages people and structures to address global challenges and enhance well-being. Professional social workers are on the front line addressing some of today's most pressing global issues. The connected global challenges of forced migration, climate change, natural disasters, and pandemics all call for social work's collective efforts in finding sustainable solutions. I believe much of the Commonwealth countries offer greater space for social workers to engage with such issues than in the global north. Does that mean social work in the global north is limited in its aspiration to advance human development? 
Yesterday, we talked about the professionalization and regulation of social work in much of the contemporary Western world and how this is beginning to influence social work discourse in the global South. As the regulation of the profession by statutory bodies benefited the people social work is committed to serve, the commodification and bureaucratization of social work in the West, I believe have given way to managerialism and neoliberal imperatives driven by an effort to promote an outcome-based approach. I feel such approaches leave the social in social work. As we all know, relationship is the core of good social work practice. While regulation is a step in the right direction, I believe the success of it is rooted in building a partnership between the social work profession, service users, and the state. A collective stewardship to promote human rights and social justice for all. When we talk about global social work, I sometimes wonder about the epistemological and ontological basis of social work. What does global in the global social work aim to advance? How is that framed in the Commonwealth social work education and practice context today? Much of the social work theories and conceptual frameworks have been born in the Western social work context. What does this mean for social work in the Commonwealth countries? What importance does indigenous knowledge have in shaping social work in less developed parts of the world? Education is viewed by some as a tool to advance oppression. As a product of Western values, the knowledge base of professional social work is rooted in evidence-informed literature. What place does indigenous knowledge, practice wisdom, cultural norms and traditional values have in such theoretical milieu? We live in an interconnected world where human mobility requires interaction and convergence of diverse cultures. What does this mean for social work? At a time when the Black Lives Matter movement and decolonizing the curriculum are an often used vocabulary in the social work lexicon, we need to be mindful of how unconscious biases and certain dominant ideas and discourses deemed as the truth can limit the exploration of subjugated knowledge that allows voices from the marginalized individuals to be heard. Decolonizing the curriculum invites uncomfortable questions that interrogate and challenge accepted knowledge and thinking. I believe the history of social work globally and locally needs to embrace a debate on the history of the minoritized communities that is the history of race, slavery, and colonialism. If that is a valid aspiration, we then need to follow that with a critical question. That is, if knowledge is universal and social work is a global profession, then why is there, why is there a lack of indigenous knowledge from the subjugated countries informing social work in education in the Western-centric environments? The history of minorities is one of struggle. The US civil rights movement, India's freedom struggle, Mandela's fight against apartheid, and the treatment of the Windrush generation, all echo people's wish to be treated equally and justly. Social work in Africa, a key part of the Commonwealth, has its roots in the pre colonial period. In the post-colonial 21st century, Africa lives with complex issues such as poverty, combating the impact of decades of HIV and AIDS pandemic, gender inequality, and years of self-serving political regimes that have continued to widen the abyss of inequalities. Against the backdrop of these daily multidimensional realities and intersectional concerns, Social work in Africa is embracing the notions of care, connection, and community. Ubuntu, I am because we are, embraces the idea that 
human beings cannot exist in isolation. In 2020, the African Journal of Social Work defined Ubuntu as a collection of values and practices that people of Africa or African origin view as making people authentic human beings. While the nuances of these values and practices vary across different ethnic groups, they all point to one thing, an authentic individual human being is part of a larger and more significant relational, communal, societal, environmental, and spiritual world. Michael Onia Bachiris, in his book, Intellectual History in Contemporary South Africa, ours that at the heart of Ubuntu is the notion that a person is a person through other people, strikes an affirmation of one's humanity through recognition of another in his or her uniqueness and difference. He points out that it is a demand for a creative intersubjective formation in which the other becomes a mirror, but only a mirror for my subjectivity. He goes on to suggest that this idealism means that humanity is not embedded in my person solely as an individual. My humanity is co-substantively bestowed upon the other and me. Humanity is a quality we owe to each other. We create each other and need to sustain this otherness creation. And if we belong to each other, we participate in our creations. We are because you are, and since you are, Definitely, I am. The I am is not a rigid subject, but a dynamic self-constitution depend on this, dependent on this otherness, creation of relation and distance. How do social workers then become the change agent in embracing Ubuntu? How do they address the perils of racism rooted in notions of othering? Ubuntu, when interwoven into social work practice, has the potential to stimulate sustainable development through the basic recognition that our shared humanity and unassailable reality of our situatedness in the human community goes beyond the present and touches on both the past and future communities. Going back to social work as a defender of human rights, I then wonder about the place of social work in defending the rights of the poor, the marginalized and oppressed. Given my own interest, research interest on refugees, I wonder what role does social work have in defending the rights of forcibly displaced people? How can we advocate for refugees when Commonwealth countries like Australia fail to recognize refugees forcibly displaced by climate change as needing protection. Should not social work be leading the way in calling for a review of the 1951 Geneva Convention on Refugees in this instance? When I look at the idea of global social work, what comes to my mind is the notion of diversity that social work encompasses. A profession that is global in nature responding to local needs. Yet, no matter how diverse, the core of our social work profession is embedded in the universal values of equality, worth, and dignity of all people. It, it is motivated by the aspirations for human rights and social justice, and strives to alleviate poverty and empower marginalized and oppressed people in order to realize their true potential. While regulation, professionalization, and an evidence-informed base are central to improving social work outcomes, there is also a need to uphold the common values that bind us together and drive each one of us to become a social worker. Social work, be it in the global north or in the commonwealth, needs to embark on a bold vision that allows a fusion of north-south knowledge and a greater understanding of our shared humanity. 
such that we can spend time away from bureaucratic tick boxes to build, build relationships with individuals, families, and communities. Co-production and Ubuntu are central to this. As Lao Tse said, go with the students, live with them, learn from them, love them, start with what they know, build with what they have. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we've because we we went through the the videos quite quickly. We've got a little bit of a little bit of time. Would you be happy to to take any a few questions uh, before we move on to the next panel? That's that's great. That's very kind no of you. Um, um, well, um, again, people are, uh, are very welcome either to to raise questions in the chat or just just raise a, a um uh, uh an icon hand and uh we'll, we'll, we'll bring you in to to ask a, a question um perhaps i could i could start with one and um maybe david has questions of, of uh, his own as well george you mentioned the idea of ubuntu and you mentioned that knowledge and values from the, the colonized world isn't isn't feeding in to uh western social work training um but on this on this idea of ubuntu on african values again there is a question who is the who are the illegitimate interpreters and keepers gatekeepers of those values um who, who defines what Ubuntu is and feeds those values into, into the process? I wonder what your thoughts are on that. That's a very interesting question, Philip. And I'm, I'm, I hope I can answer that. It's a very interesting and complex question. I think um, um, keepers of knowledge, and I think that we all are, and there is a need for us in co-producing this knowledge and recognizing that we all have shared values and also a shared space in this world. And I think um, I have been very fortunate to travel around and to visit different parts of the world given my research with refugees. And what I have seen um, is that it might sound a bit of a critical commentary um, in the global development agenda that when we engage, engage with the global South, what kind of partnership are we trying to strike? What kind of equitable and fair, fairly arranged distribution of intellectual property rights is driving some of this conversation. What kind of space and sequence in authorship is given to our collaborators from the global south? And that sort of questions we need to ask in resetting some of these paradigms, some of these discourses, that knowledge is produced in different parts of the world, but if knowledge is produced in the West, we keep the intellectual property rights. But if the knowledge is sourced in the global South, then just because funding comes from the global North, we don't necessarily have the right to keep that intellectual property rights. We need to share that with the, the people where that knowledge is created. And that sort of you know, is my thinking. In terms of Ubuntu, and it's about, you know, reflecting who we are, what do we stand for in this shared endeavor? You know, how do we interpret and um, realize some of the aspirations of social work? If the global definition of social work is to promote justice and address inequality and promote human rights and empower the poor and marginalized, how do we sort of share that voice? How do we uh, leave no, no one behind, you know, and support those individuals in advancing their opportunities is something that I feel 
Ubuntu calls for? I hope that answered your question. It does, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, David, would you like to come in? If, if there's nobody else, we, we have um, got some sessions on, on Ubuntu later on in the workshops or in the, in the sessions later on. Um, but um, there's, there is an interesting question which you have opened up, Philip, which is who owns values and how do you um, monitor those and, and who is the guardian of them and um, how does that get um, conveyed? And of course, in a political system um, and in a professional structure, there are institutions that do that. But somehow it feels as if some of those institutions have become divorced from people. And social workers are caught between those two elements, I think, with, between the, the institutional structures, the regulatory bodies, the um, received wisdoms, and the way people live their lives. And social work is really um, working that through and interpreting and the, 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 the different interests to each other. Um, that's not to make an excessively grand claim, it just feels as what practice is about. Um, and it's, it's worth exploring it and looking at history shows us how those influences move from um, between the different strengths. Um, other colleagues may have other views about this and I'm looking forward to um, hearing the, the presentations on Ubuntu later. And is there anyone else who would like to, uh, to, to come in with a, with a question on this? Um, yes, George. I was also wondering, given that, you know, the focus today is um, Africa, this part of the world, whether there will be anybody from that context to comment on this as well, um, Africa, North America, Latin America, the Caribbean, about Ubuntu. I'm not an expert on that particular thing, but, you know, last year it was the theme of the World Social Work Day, and since then we have been talking about how we can embrace and you know, use Ubuntu as a framework to advance the values of social work. Uh, but I'm sure um, uh, there are many more experts in this audience um, yeah. than I am. Well, John, we've got, a, we've got John, a couple of speakers in the next in the next panel, and they probably want to keep the right. powder dry uh, <laughs> at the moment. Um, uh, uh, John John Pinkerton, uh, would you like to ask a question? Professor Pinkerton from Northern Ireland. Hi, John, you're still muted. There okay. you go. Yeah. Okay, I was just um, posed a question in the, uh, in the chat column. Um, get, just thinking about history as a natural experiment and the particular Commonwealth focus of this conference I was wondering, is there evidence from uh, within the African social work context, or I suppose in other um, countries from the uh, global South majority world, is there any evidence um, historically that the different colonial imperialist powers led to different social work and different outcomes? Does anyone want to answer that? Um, I can briefly reflect on that. Yes, but I'm sure yeah, that please, the, please do, George. And then um, I don't want to comment on the African context because I don't know much about it except my little research in, in the context of Uganda. Uh, but in the Indian context, um, um, yes, I know. And I think um, social work, like in the West, um, used to be rooted in philanthropic approaches and as aspirations. And India is home to uh, four of the world's um, um, uh, religion for that matter, and all endeavored to support poor uh, and, and marginalized. And they all have a kind of philanthropic um, approaches and enterprises. And that continued through a number of years and through the colonial period and up until the 1930s, social work in India was very much rooted in that philanthropic approach. Um, and in some respects, the notion of professional social work arrived in India in 1930s, brought in by 
um, uh, by the Tata family. You know, the Tata's brought some people from the US to set up a, 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 a educational institution to professionalize social work. And the first um, higher education, first in institute offering social work was um, set up in 1936, I think, 36 or 37, I can't remember, in, in Bombay, which is now known as Mumbai, called the Dorabji Tata Institute of Social Work, which is now known as the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, one of the deemed universities, as well as the top social work institute in India. And when I studied social work many years ago in the early 90s, um, I didn't have a single test, text that was written by um, Indian authors, okay, except one research methodology book, much of which borrowed um, ideas and theories from the global north, okay. That didn't mean that there was no knowledge available in the Indian context, okay. And all that we were practicing was very much rooted in Indian values, while what we were taught was deriving from the Western knowledge. So there was a, a some kind of clash. And when I look back, you know, those days I, I guess I wasn't academic enough, so to say, you know, to critique that North-South interaction and to assimilate knowledge and adapt that knowledge to suit um, the situation in India. But having said that, increasingly, there is this, um, um, what, what's the right word? I can't, I, 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 I don't know, but I think there is that increasing effort to indigenize social work and also by institutions like the Tata Institute of Social Work. Number of you know, academics in India are now advocating to give um, credibility to local knowledge and how local knowledge can shape responses that are suitable to the local needs and therefore increasing the outcome for individuals, families and communities. Now, if you were to um, generalize that um, assertion to different parts of the world, I assume there are attempts being made to, to embrace indigenous knowledge in driving social work uh, uh, social work priorities. Thank you very much indeed.